of all the crafts in the art of film making, particularly Telugu cinema. I would believe if there is something strikingly super, superfluous, it is the job of the editor. Why else would you sit down and watch for two hours and 20 minutes? A linear story of a father of a middle class, forget his lifestyle. Fighting for two hours and 20 minutes to get a medication for his daughter who suffered, suffers a rare ailment of spinal muscular atrophy. <clears throat> the medication is supposed to be 17 crores for a single injection. How much will you prop up the story with villains, baddies, fights, skills, liquor, dance, hate? But that's exactly what Kole, Kol, Kolanu Sailesh does with the latest Venkatesh film, Sainda. In Sainda, the central character, Sainda, is played by Venkatesh and is popularly known as Sai Ko, spelled S A I, Sai for Sai and Ko for Kone. So, Sai Ko, Sai Ko is how he's called, and he sure is living in a world of a many who justify the name, suspect including the fellow maker who calls himself Sai Ko, Sailesh Kone. The story starts off with Arya as Manas. You think he's the villain in the first of the many villains you're going to see in the movie. He's in a, a quasi camp yard, camp mill, camp factory, you won't know what it is, who's telling us about a couple of uh, drugs, ammunition, human peddlers, headed by Mukesh Rishi as Mitra and assisted by Vikas Navasuki. Uh, while Vikas works for Mitra, Mitra knows that he is the man who can deliver things to him. And so he, Vikas, and his girlfriend, Jasmine, Andrea, Jeremiah, are the ones who are at his beck and call and who are delivering cattle, uh, whatever he wants at whatever point in time. Things go amiss. When Mitra's son disturbs the beehive and aggravates the quiet psycho Sand of Kuneri back into action to stall the drug couple from transporting children, adolescents in fact, training them and sending them across the border to some other country. The battle therefore is a battle line drawn between Vikas and Mitra on the one hand and Sainda Koneru on the other. Sainda however works at the local shipyard for an extremely honest officer, Murti, again a dignified performance from Jay Prakash. He also has a friend sympathizer in Manogya, played by Shraddha Srina, who's just coming out of a, a skewed relation with her husband, played by Get Up Simu, who at some point in time even assists the villains, but does very little. So you have battle lines drawn, and you won't believe that the whole gray or black world is literally scared of Sainab Kuneri, Sai Ko. And Sai Ko justifies that he could kill any number of people, he could, he could beat them to pulp, he could murder them, he could throw grenades, he can... He's a one-man army. What he can't do like Mahesh Babu in Guntur Karamas, he doesn't light a matchstick every five minutes. On the other hand, he's middle-aged. He has a doctor 
and therefore is not making lewd comments about this girl. Now, this is an interesting aspect that we would have to realize about actors in Telugu cinema. After the Ramarao Nageshwar Rao career, when they continued to do heroes when they were 60s and did a few other, very few films of their age, we had actors like Shoban Babu who said, I'm a hero. And after that, there's no Shoban Babu and he walks away from the glamour light. Then you have Nagarjuna and Venkatesh, of whom Venkatesh particularly in the last decade or so, has very subtly moved away from playing mainstream hero to playing somebody who's in his 40s and has done an has created a niche for himself over there. The Drishyams are examples of those kind of things. He's done light-hearted comedies, he's played um, a movie playing the elder brother for Mahesh Babu. Notice his Drishyams, notice Sita Mavaketlo and films of the kind. He's moved subtly and is played within his age. Here's another example. He has dead who's willing to be responsible for the upkeep of his daughter, Gayatri, played by baby Sara Padekar. Choti Mu Badi Oh my God, that girl, she needs to be trimmed with her acting. I know it's difficult to assess young child talent. They are generally very endearing, but this girl, I think, uh, needs to be told a lot more, especially since we've seen a fine child performance in Hai Nana. This girl is not up there, and I think she was so important to be subtle and fine and nice, but she's very theatric, and she's over the top already. So on the one hand, you have this very domestic, happy family life going on. On the other hand, you have him fighting the goons on and off. In the background, you have the cockle working. He is waiting to swoop in and take these children away. The twain are to meet and the twain are to meet in Bindas fights and thrills galore. The film loses its plot. The 17 crore injection story has some 300 people waiting. You would like to believe you are in some kind of a place where there is no law, there is no nothing happening. It's just these few families that control happenings in this society. And so you have a lady who is a social activist fighting hard to bring down the prices because she can help children suffering from spinal muscular atrophy and raise 17 crores per child in GS 300 children work your arithmetic before the children grow up. How it all happens. And then we have Nawazuddin as the main villain who for obviously can't say the obvious equivalent a Hindi abusive word and therefore says Ben Stokes every time. Hey, or if, if a filmmaker thinks that this is how he's suffering, God help. However, Sanyu is all right from a mainstream perspective, primarily because it's violence. It's not personalized by and large. When Katesh carries the film on his shoulder, he brings in that intensity that makes an actor different from a star. Sainam is a Venkatesh film in the sense that the moment the director Sailesh Kolanu takes Venkatesh, he knows that his half his job is done. Unfortunately, the remaining half, 80% is done by the stunt man and only 20% by Sailesh Kolanu. This is the undoing of the film. Otherwise, another undoing of the movie obviously is it's two hour, 20 minute run, no reason for it. Mukesh Rishi passes muscle. Nawazuddin, amazing actor. He has a role where he's got to overplay. He does so, but yet there's a little, little nuances that he gives to a film. The female cast, including Shraddha Srinath and Andrea Jeremiah, 
have no contributions whatsoever to make to the movie. Soulless performances from both of them. Jay Prakash and uh, we have uh, Jisu Sen Gupta coming in for a few minutes. Just coming, adding some kind of a North Grace to the story. Then you have Apaji Arts, Ambisha coming in as a doctor who's no role at all. Then you have these science laboratories which are so fiction. It shows how we distance ourselves from reality when we are making cinema for the masses. Cinema for the masses is not like that. Cinema for the stupid. The day our mainstream film makers know the difference, we are ready for better cinema. I would strongly recommend they go back to old Malayalam films and learn their lessons. On that count, signed up. Is that okay? Your festival season around. You have a film to choose, and I'll go for this. And with acknowledgments to Datu and Abhinav, I sign off. Bye bye.